Forget jersey numbers. The true number 10 position on the field has historically been one of football's most crucial roles. Traditionally, the number 10 was the team's creative heart, sparking attacks with their vision and skill. However, its presence on the pitch seems to be dwindling. This begs the question, what's happening to the once dominant number 10? The number 10 was once reserved for the team's most gifted player. These masters of dribbling, passing, and shooting posed a constant threat to opposing defenses. But beyond technical skills, they possessed exceptional footballing intelligence, anticipating plays and orchestrating attacks. The number 10 position has traditionally demanded not just technical mastery, but also a messiah complex, the ability to carry the team on their shoulders when needed. For decades, it housed football's most creative talents, like Zidane, Kaká, Raúl, and Bergkamp. While typically an attacking midfielder, the number 10 earned its nickname from the players who wore it. In Argentina, they called it the enganche, meaning the hook, highlighting its crucial role in connecting midfield and attack. As formations shifted from the 1970s 4-3-3 to the 4-3-1-2 or 4-4-2 diamond of the 1980s, the hook became even more vital in the modern era. Often deployed in a 4-2-3-1 formation with a single striker and a double pivot behind them, the number 10 also finds its place in a 3-4-1-2 shape. The number 10's free-roaming nature often meant minimal instruction from managers. Their primary role in possession was to bridge the gap between defense and attack, drawing pressure and finding killer passes to create goal-scoring opportunities. The traditional number 10 wasn't just a playmaker, they could also finish chances themselves. Their diverse skill set extended beyond possession-based play. While defensive responsibilities were minimal, they were adept at creating counterattacks by anticipating and intercepting passes. However, the evolution of tactics has challenged the number 10's role. Many teams prioritize defensive midfielders or box-to-box -box midfielders in these areas, sacrificing creativity for defensive stability. The rise of the 4-3-3 formation has further marginalized the classic number 10. In this system, the midfield operates as a cohesive unit of deep-lying playmakers, with the defensive midfielder's role expanding to cover areas once occupied by the number 10. This team-oriented approach has made less room for individual playmakers like the traditional number 10. The traditional playmaker role, once the domain of a select few number 10s, has become a more widespread skill in modern football. This shift towards larger midfields, three or even four players, has led to midfield congestion, limiting space and placing greater emphasis on wingers and fullbacks for attacking opportunities. While some players have successfully adapted their play style to these changing circumstances, others haven't been able to reinvent themselves. Kevin De Bruyne and David Silva, for example, have thrived under Pep Guardiola's system, transforming from classic number 10 S into versatile midfielders capable of contributing across the board. Similarly, Roberto Firmino has adjusted to a deeper false nine role at Liverpool, while Bernardo Silva seamlessly switches between central midfield and the wing. Not all players have successfully navigated the tactical shift away from the classic number 10. Players like Mesut Ozil, James Rodriguez, and Philippe Coutinho all flourished in the past, but haven't replicated that success in recent years. Rodriguez, who was instrumental for Colombia in 2014, struggled to adapt to Zinedine Zidane's tactics at Real Madrid, which de-emphasized the traditional number 10 role. Ozil faced a similar situation. His idol, Riquelm, experienced difficulty when he arrived at Barcelona in 2002 under coach Luis van Gaal, who didn't utilize a classic number 10. Ozil's struggles to adapt at Barcelona ultimately led to a move to Villarreal. The future of the number 10 position is complex. While the traditional skill set may not be as in demand, there's still room for players who can combine creativity with other attributes. The free role associated with the traditional number 10 seems incompatible with modern tactics. Increased demands on players to contribute defensively have eroded space in midfield, leaving little room for the classic playmaker. Players like Kaka and Raquelm have expressed their belief that the classic number 10 role is disappearing. Advanced defenses limit the space these players thrive in. However, there's still hope for creativity in the midfield. Young players like Jude Bellingham demonstrate the ability to adapt. They can not only play the traditional number 10 role, but also contribute defensively and fulfill other tactical needs. Coaches like Marcelo Bielsa emphasize the value of players who combine creativity with tireless work rate. Bruno Fernandes, despite lacking some traditional number 10 skills, 
has thrived with his high work rate and ability to contribute in both attack and defense. He serves as a potential model for a new kind of number 10, one that prioritizes results over artistry and doesn't rely on a fixed position on the field. So, has the traditional number 10 role officially vanished? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more football content. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video.